Hello everyone, I'm Graham Ledger and welcome to the Daily Ledger, our cover story, the search and destroy mission that holds no bounds. Yesterday, it's Trump's campaign people and his personal attorney who were targeted. Today, it's Donald Trump's friend and confidant. Tomorrow, who knows? Maybe the First Lady. The impeachment counsel, Robert Mueller, appears to be going wherever he wishes, whenever he wishes, and none of it is pointing to so-called Russian collusion. Now, imagine the mental and financial burden this partisan investigation is putting on President Trump. The newest member of the legal defense team, Rudy Giuliani, is trying to fight legal fire with legal fire. However, apparently, Giuliani is also spraying members of Team Trump with some inadvertent collateral friendly legal fire. You have a group of investigators and they say that I am not a target and I'm not a target. But you have a group of investigators that are all Democrats. In some cases, they went to the Hillary Clinton celebration that turned out to be a funeral. So you have all these investigators, they're Democrats. In all fairness, Bob Mueller worked for Obama for eight years. You look at the statements that were made. If you take a look, as an example, at the Rod Rosenstein letter to me prior to the firing of James Comey, just read it. Put it in the air. Your viewers don't know about it. Put that letter on the air. It very much speaks very loudly, and that's just one thing. So I would say this. If I could be, I would love to speak. I would love to. Nobody wants to speak more than me. In fact, against my lawyers, because most lawyers, they never speak on anything. I would love to speak, because we've done nothing wrong. There was no collusion with the Russians. There was nothing. There was no obstruction, you know? Very funny. If you fight back because you people say something wrong or they something wrong or they leak, which they've been doing, if you fight back, they say, oh, that's obstruction of justice. Somebody says something wrong, you fight back, they say that's obstruction of justice. It's nonsense. All right, big picture here. The president is getting down into the weeds of this because he is under constant attack, constant pressure from the Mueller hit squad. This investigation is a distraction from the positive Trump agenda. It is a distraction for the president himself, obviously, and it's a distraction for we the people. But the investigation is all based on what exactly? No violation of federal law, no statute broken as a predicate to Mueller's probe. That is why the president continues to call the investigation, quote, a witch hunt. Joining me now from Atlanta, Georgia, criminal defense attorney and professor of criminology, Jason Swindell. Uh, Jason, uh, we've heard uh, people come out. We heard the president himself saying he would love to testify and uh, give a deposition to Robert Mueller. But his attorneys are uh, right now appears to be saying, hey, don't do it, which makes sense. We've had Trey Gowdy, congressman uh, from South Carolina, come out, former prosecutor, say, yeah, come on, testify, Mr. President. If, if the president were your client, would you ever let him sit down in a deposition or <laughs> a grand jury and face questioning? Well, Graham, well, uh, good afternoon. Uh, the answer is no. Uh, President Trump is probably quite a difficult client to have. Um, I would never, under any circumstances, allow him to answer any questions. Um, and quite frankly, he probably says too many things publicly and with tweets as it is. All right, well, uh, let's, let's talk about the process. Let's talk about the process here, uh, the Robert Mueller uh, process. Yeah. Technically, he works for the president. Uh, technically, he is a, a, an adjunct, if you will, of the Department of Justice. Now, over the history, the recent history of the Department of Justice, uh, there have been two opinions written on whether a sitting president of the United States can be indicted. Uh, one was from the Nixon administration and one was from the Clinton administration. And they both agree that a sitting president cannot be indicted. You know about this, right? Yes, I do. Okay. Here's where I'm going with this. There are processes uh, involved here uh, as, as part of an indictment. And, and one of the processes is a subpoena. And we've heard this week Robert Mueller threatening to subpoena the President of the United States. Not without precedent, but this is a tactic used uh, as a, a predicate to an indictment. Um, if, if 
Robert Mueller is doing this as a, a threat to hold this over the president of the United States um, as if he were to possibly indict the president of the United States. It seems to me that Robert Mueller is in violation of the rules that have been decided by the Department of Justice. You see where I'm going with this? How, how do you characterize it? Well, I, I think you hit the nail on the head, so to speak. Actually, in 2000, uh, the Department of Justice issued a statement that said that it is that they would never, under any circumstances, seek an indictment or investigate a sitting president. And why is that? Because, as you said earlier, it is a distraction and it makes it where our chief executive cannot go through and do the duties that the president is supposed to do. Now, when it comes to what Mr. Mueller's doing, that is absolutely in violation of Department of Justice policy. There's no question about that. Right now, these are threats. Uh, there haven't been any subpoenas issued. You're correct that it's not unprecedented. It has happened three times in history. But if a subpoena is issued, and is sent to the president, then his lawyers need to fight that tooth and nail. All right, but these, these two <laughs> subpoenas, uh, we should clarify. One was a civil subpoena, uh, that is Jones versus Clinton, and in the United States versus Nixon, uh, that was for evidence. It wasn't for subpoenaing directly the president of the United States, correct? Correct, those were for documents uh, during the Nixon administration. This would be for testimony uh, that President Trump uh, seems to want to give anyway. All right. My uh, premise is that Robert Mueller is off not only the constitutional rails, but also the rails of his initial charter. Uh, and in my opinion, it is time for A.G. Sessions, that would be Attorney General Jeff Sessions, to make some moves here and make some decisions. And I have three of them. Number one, I believe Sessions should order to Rod Rosenstein, the Deputy Attorney General, who's overseeing the probe, ought to order Mueller, Rosenstein needs to order Mueller to stand down and then report to Congress. I want to talk about each one of these with you in just a moment, but let me run through them. Uh, let's go back to the graphic, okay? Number two, punish Rosenstein Sessions should for allowing Mueller to violate the scope of the original charter. And number three, order Rosenstein to recuse himself because he is a witness. And that's a fascinating aspect. Number one, though, um, ordering Mueller to stand down. Rosenstein should order Mueller to stand down. I say this because I think it's time that the American people, or at least Congress, get a briefing and, and, and get a, a, some sort of status notice of where this investigation is. Your thoughts? Well, one thought is this. Uh, Attorney General Sessions has already recused himself from this investigation. That's why the Deputy Attorney General is, is now in charge. So the question is, what authority does he have after he has recused himself? Secondly, Congress does need to know what's going on. And as you probably know, there was a memo that was drafted last year that provided the scope of the Mueller investigation. Congressional leaders have asked for that unredacted memo and have not been provided that information, which to me is very disturbing. Right, but we've seen, we've seen drafts of it and we've seen pieces of what uh, Rosenstein is allowing Mueller to do and and the original scope the original charter again was ostensibly Russian collusion uh, and if there was any yeah. kind of uh, uh, collusion between the Trump campaign uh, and Russia so clearly we're way off a of course there and so here's why I believe that Sessions should sanction Rosenstein because it is it appears to me that Rosenstein is allowing Mueller to usurp the powers of the Attorney General by going after, for example, Paul Manafort. Today, we just heard a judge say in open court, he moved, hey, does Mueller even have the authority to prosecute these crimes that have nothing to do with Russian collusion? Agreed. But the problem is, we don't know what was in that memo. We don't know what the scope of his investigation has been authorized by. And so the bits and pieces that you mentioned earlier may be helpful in some ways, but we do not have an unredacted 
memo that Congress can review. And yes, I do believe that he should be sanctioned. I believe that he is way out of bounds. Um, but sometimes that's what zealous prosecutors do. All right. And that brings me to number three. <laughs> and, and that is that Rosenstein necessarily is a witness in this investigation yeah. because of the memo yeah. that he wrote to President Trump saying that James Comey should be fired. That's part of the investigation. Why in the world is he in charge of this investigation at the DOJ if he's a witness to the investigation? That is a great question. I cannot answer that, but I do agree. He is a witness and he needs to recuse himself. And another member of the Department of Justice needs to take over. Hopefully someone who doesn't have a number of Democrats working under them. And we could maybe have a part or an impartial investigation if one even needs to continue, because remember, there's not a bit of evidence that has been produced, that has been even discussed, that directly or indirectly links President Trump to the, quote, Russia probe or at, Russia gate. At this moment, uh, Jason, it appears to me that the deputy attorney general, or, or I'm sorry, Robert Mueller, um, is really not even accountable to the deputy attorney general. He's given him such a long leash. So he's he's not accountable, Mueller, to the president, clearly because of political machinations going on right now. He's not accountable to the attorney general because, if you noted, he, he recused himself. He's not directly being accountable to Congress, and he's certainly not accountable to we the people. So it's about time somebody, that would be the AG, steps forward here and says, hey, Robert Mueller, it's time for you to indeed become accountable to the American people, because that's where the rubber hits the road. Jason, thanks.